Like who, who would have thought that Bitcoin would be less volatile than the stock market, right? I mean, that's really what it is, though. But um, looking quickly at the charts, there's a level I'm watching for a potential near term breakout. Now, let's not let's not fool ourselves. The bigger pattern is still bearish. So you have the big drop and the same kind of thing as chain link going on. But look at this trend line from this pivot to this pivot high to this pivot high right down. And look at how Bitcoin's trying to break out. If it can break above this, I think you get a short-term short squeeze where this could at least see 22.5, maybe even 25,000. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Gareth Soloway forecasting Bitcoin's next move, as well as his take on the economy. Soloway says to remember that crypto is not an isolated space, so you need to stay informed on what the Fed is doing. It's also important to watch the price of the dollar and even to stay on top of the stock markets. As Jerome Powell's attitude during his press conference was very peaceable and said hiking is done, this will mean more money in the system, which is positive for Bitcoin because more money will be able to be invested into it. Soloway is worried because Bitcoin is still a leg down and we're going through inflation and recession. Also, there have been uncanny similarities between the crash of the dot-com bubble and Bitcoin today which, worst case scenario, will lead to a complete washout of the entire crypto space. Let's listen to this interview with Gareth Soloway as he predicts where Bitcoin will go in the next few weeks and how inflation will continue to affect the market. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy what we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. And you, you've you come out and said 12K is in the cards. Is that still your target price for, let's say, a bottom or are you kind of moving that around? Yeah, so I mean, at this stage, I think that's my high end. Um, I hate oh, that wow. everyone is saying it now, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's one of those <laughs> things where we all know when everyone starts talking about a level, that's where it's like, okay, well, it's either not going to get there or it's going to go below that level. I've been racking my brain and I'm like, okay, well, if the stock market still has like 30% downside, which I think it does, how does Bitcoin not at least go down 30% or more, right? So so it's a tricky scenario here. I would love to see that pivot on Bitcoin where it starts to go up when the stock market goes down, but it just it doesn't seem quite yet to have that maturity of, of Bitcoin at this point. I know you have crypto that you just trade in and out of. I also believe you have crypto that you hold on to, correct? Yes. So, yeah. So, so just like just like any trader or any any investor or any person that's been through the ringer many times in trading, like myself and investing, I I'm a big believer in trading it, but also that if you have a bigger thesis, then you want to be invested for a longer period. So basically, what I I, I didn't buy, I, I was all out of Bitcoin aside from trading it until we got below twenty thousand. Once we got below twenty thousand, when we hit nineteen, even though I think it's going to twelve, thirteen maybe even sub i decided to take a chunk of money let's let's call it i don't know like three hundred thousand bucks and i i took it i divided it into one sixth amounts and i put one sixth of that to work at 19. and then the idea is is that as it drops every three thousand or so i'm just going to add another one sixth and kind of be very robotic as an investor to dollar cost average in because again you know for all i know it's bottoming here i mean again the charts say right now that probabilities favor a move down but i could be wrong and i don't want to miss the train on the upside as well so i love the long-term thesis on bitcoin and crypto um so i'm just kind of inching in here if it drops to 16 i'll add more if it drops to 13 i'll add more 10 seven etc all the way down so so yes i'm a big believer don't don't ever have a hard line in the sand because you might be wrong you know if you like something enough for the long term and you think you're going to go to 100 500 000, don't be a stickler over a few thousand bucks <laughs> soloway believes that the economy will decline into a worsening recession and ultimately the fed will begin to print money again to compensate he predicts that this printing will create a domino effect that will lead to an even worse recession this decline in the economy will in turn create an opportunity for Bitcoin to increase and essentially go from being a risk on asset to being comparable to gold. Are we going to see just a like sharp decline or is it going to be a steady ladder down? Like what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so so I don't think the markets have bottomed yet. The equity markets uh, certainly have not. I think Bitcoin and crypto is closer to bottoming than the stock market, mainly because I think you have that goldish type safety play that eventually Bitcoin will turn into, right? So as the macro gets worse and worse and, you know, people get scared of being in, you know, stocks and the economy, 
you know, the, the idea of turning towards a Bitcoin definitely makes a lot of sense. We're not there yet, so I want people to understand that. But, but at some point, 12, 13,000, wherever it may be, I do think Bitcoin bottoms out and then starts to grind up. The macro is, is going to be a tricky thing. I really think we're in for a, a long period recession, um, mainly because the Fed can't bail us out. If we look at the past 10, 20 years, every recession or every market dip like the COVID collapse, the Fed was just printing money. Well, that was great when we have 2% inflation or less, but now we have you know 8%. And even if it drops to four, how does the Fed print us out of a recession at four, which would cause inflation to potentially spike to 20%? which I think is a great opportunity for crypto overall, because you're going to see these these new technologies, these other ways to kind of figure things out coming to the forefront. So so I would say just prepare. People should prepare for still some more volatility, um, maybe another next leg lower in Bitcoin. But the buying opportunity is coming. Can you see any scenario where we're in a deep recession and Bitcoin actually benefits from it? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely do. I think for us to get to that point, number one, we need to see more maturity in the crypto sector. So so we look at a, an asset like Bitcoin that's only 13 years old, right? So so it's very young in the scheme of like the stock market. I mean, if you even looking at just Apple, Apple's been around since the 80s. So it's, you know, 40 plus year old company. Um, so I think you need to see that. I also think you have to see regulation. I know everyone loves the decentralization aspect, but at the same time, if you're going to actually turn Bitcoin and other cryptos into like a safety haven, then you need to know the rules. I need to know the rules, right? So, so I'm allocating some of my capital towards crypto, but at the same time, there's no way I'm putting like a few million dollars in crypto because I don't know what the heck the government's going to do. Right. And I don't want to be caught with my pants down, you know, if, if you will, in that scenario where they come out with strict rules and Bitcoin dumps out by 80 percent. I don't think that's going to happen. But the point is that you have fiduciary responsibilities from a hedge fund perspective, pension funds. And that's the money we need to attract to crypto. Let's pick up, bring up the chart here of ETH is that you're basically in what we would refer to as a wedge pattern, right? So you have this line here sloping down, then this one connecting the recent lows, and you're hovering right on support. So for me, it's one of those scenarios where kind of like a couple of the other ones we looked at is that as long as it holds this line, you, you look to attack this area here, and if it can break out, then you start heading up to the next resistance, which is a line from the all-time high on ETH down to this secondary high, which looks to me to be around, you know, 1750 or so up here. So to me, it's, it's, it's to me, there's no definitive, like this is going to bust out here. Since I'm bullish on Bitcoin, I would say that I'm slightly bullish on ETH as well, just because they tend to move together. But really what we need to see is this line broken here, which would be your short term resistance. And then you can get that pop to, you know, basically 1750 or so. Now, if it does break that lower trend line, do you where do you think the stop market? Where do you think the the how far down do you think is going to go if you had a confirmed yeah, yeah, breakout I mean, line? So yeah, if, you, if it breaks here and starts to kind of go lower, you got to be looking at back to that sub thousand dollar level. Um, and again, no one wants to see it there. But but if once you break this line, there's really not much support until you get down to these lows and then this low right down here. So, yeah, you're looking right around a thousand bucks if it busts down there. Soloway says that we are in a bubble and when the bubble disintegrates, everything gets destroyed. He has seen this before and is already alarmed with how hard Bitcoin has fallen. Soloway says there is no good end game in the market. Everything will only destroy the economy in the long term. Soloway says that investors need to be aware that there will be a massive reset where the dollar will collapse. So far, all markets, including Bitcoin, have had an expectation that CPI numbers will decrease. But he warns that if the CPI numbers go back up, there will be consequences to the market that will lead to a sharp decline and sell-offs will continue to increase. What do you guys think about Gareth Soloway's take on the markets? Do you agree that it's a wise time to take a percentage off the table? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.